Hi everyone, uh, my name is Li. Uh, I'm a second year PhD student at the uh, University of Illinois at Champaign. Uh, today I will present our paper. Uh, its name is Kai Share My Eyes, a, crowdsourcing, a web crowdsourcing based face partition approach towards privacy aware face recognition. It, it's really a long name. Uh, so I think um, I think like most of you are very familiar with the uh, face recognition, even if you are not doing related research, right? Um, just like uh, uh, example A and example B. So everyone may currently have a smartphone that checks your face to, to unlock your phone. Um, also, for example, um, in figure C, um, if you upload some photos to online platform, they may tag some celebrities if they know also, there are many face-related research that can leverage the face recognition algorithm to improve their performance. For example, in figure D, um, if someone wants to generate talking faces, which is a, a popular research topic in, in computer vision, um, the coding of identity features from the face recognition model can significantly improve the quality of the generated videos. So these are like, uh, different applications of face recognition. Uh, so how does the face recognition algorithm work? Um, I will briefly discuss it. So I show a typical face recognition model structure in, in figure A um, with the uh, solid arrows. You can see um, a face recognition model usually consists of two parts. Uh, the first one is an image encoder to encode a given face image to high dimensional vectors. And we usually use um, um, local detector or deep learning um, models. Um, otherwise it's good. And the uh, second is a feature classifier that classifies the vector to a specific identity. For example, uh, we know the input image is Bill Gates, right? Uh, so the face recognition model will classify the image to the to the Bill Gates label, uh, the semantic words. So it's very straightforward. Uh, but this is not the whole story. Um, face recognition algorithm can also be used for the face verification task. For example, um, there is a new face image uh, looks like Tim Cook that is never seen before, uh, never seen by by this face recognition model. So we want to say if the two images are from the same person, we can encode both images to high dimensional vectors by the encoder and then we calculate the similarity of two facial vectors based on some distance matrix such as cosine similarity. Um, as you can say, um, face recognition algorithm usually maps the input images to some identities. Um, that means to to train such a face recognition model, we need the identity information of the face images as training label. So these labels are mostly collected or at least verified by crowd workers. Um, so these are, uh, the crowd workers are some online people who get paid to, to create labels. Um, so these images and the labels are sent to researchers um, who use the image to train a face recognition algorithm. As you can say, um, such a process usually exposes the human face image to both crowd workers and researchers. So if I'm a social media user with many photos, um, actually I, I don't want to contribute my personal photos to these people due to my privacy concerns. So more and more social media users with the same concern, just, just like me, so are willing to set their photos as private um, so other people can't see and utilize them. As a result, um, many face recognition algorithms can only use the, the public face image training data. So these images are mainly from the um, celebrities. Um, using these images can have many drawbacks. For example, the identity information is limited because there are limited numbers of celebrities even around the world. So it's highly likely that there exists some domain discrepancy um, between the celebrity faces and the, the personal faces due to the face expression and the shooting environment, just like uh, the two photos in the, uh, in the bottom left. 
Um, that, that can be a problem, right? Uh, so to solve the problem, there have been some privacy aware face related algorithms that process the human face images in different ways. So for example, uh, a very common way is to just embed the human faces to visual features by applying the uh, local detector or deep computer vision models. For example, we can decode the, the, the face of Bill Gates to like a five, uh, 101 uh, and 12 dimension vector. But of course, it's not a good idea uh, to use it for the face recognition application because the crowd worker cannot annotate the face um, by looking at uh, uh, some numerical values. Also, the research, researchers cannot use them because they don't know any label about this face. Um, another way is to manipulate the human faces in raw image or hidden space. So for example, uh, in figure B, uh, we can see there are many different ways to change the pixels of the image in order to, to hide or change the identity of the face. So it's a good idea, but um, there are several limitations. The one limitation is that um, it cannot protect the identity effectively. People are still likely to recognize these faces. Also, uh, the different change to the face with the same identity can confuse both crowd workers and researchers. So for example, if the photos of Bill Gates are converted to different identities by changing his nose and eyes, so um, which will influence the model or confuse the model. So we think the problem in another way. So firstly, we observe that the partial face, which means the, the part of the face um, that is cropped from the entire face can effectively protect the identity information. So if you only see the mouth on Bill Gates, it, it's hard for a person to link it to Bill Gates but yeah, it's possible because Bill Gates is so famous. So you have already remembered him every face component. But for common social media users who only have several face images, it's, it's difficult for you to identify him or her with one or two partial faces. That's the first point. And uh, then we observe that if we ensemble different partial faces that contain similar identity or demographic information, we can distinguish them based on many specific face character, characteristics. Uh, for example, uh, the two ensemble faces at bottom right, uh, we are confident to say that these two ensemble faces are from different group of people because the left one describes an old male while the right one is more likely a young female. That means we can create, that means we can create labels for them. The label is they are different people. So, uh, so otherwise they may come from the same group or even a similar person. The label is, the label is one, uh, otherwise the, the label is zero, right? So it's a binary label for them. But this way we create label data uh, even without knowing the identity of any partial face. So how to uh, ensemble the human faces with similar uh, characteristics, um, that's something we human good at. We may not point out the, the exact identity of a partial face, but it's easy for us to, to distinguish partial faces based on their characteristics to different groups. So our research goal is, uh, as I've shown in the slide, uh, so we want to develop a crowdsourcing based privacy aware face recognition framework that leverages the personal face images to improve the state of our face recognition model while protecting the identity information of these private face images. Uh, so based on the above observation, uh, we propose our framework partial crowd. It's a crowdsourcing based privacy aware face recognition framework that leverages both personal and uh, public face images to improve the performance of face recognition model. We show the lab figure to illustrate the overall uh, structure of our framework and uh, the red figure to show the pattern of partial crowd. Uh, the blue blocks are different modules of partial crowd. Um, I will then discuss each module in the following slides. So we, we first develop a crowd source partial graph constructor that collects partial faces from personal face images and uh, merge them to a graph structure. 
Uh, as we discussed, social media users are not willing to share their face images um, due to the privacy concern. So we only ask them to share their partial faces. And uh, how to define the partial faces? We actually segment a human face um, based on its landmark information. Uh, you can see a top figure. We can segment the human faces to multiple blocks and uh, each block represents one partial face. So in our implementation, we actually um, did more engineering patterns like rotate the image and uh, uh, like uh, transform the image, something like that. And we can create many different partial faces. So social media user can select any piece of the partial face to share from zero partial face, or I want to share all of them. It's up to the social media user. So these partial faces are put into a partial face pool that contains partial faces from lots of human faces. So note that we, we don't mark any partial face to the original user, which means uh, we can't trace back to the original social media account or something like this. Um, so the partial faces are put together uh, in a pool without any prior knowledge. So after that, we design a partial face interface that randomly sample image batch with each batch containing a set of partial faces. Uh, the, interf the interface uh, tasks online crowd worker um, to pair partial faces based on the understanding or censoring of these faces. For example, they, they may feel some faces may all belong to the old people, or they may say a partial face with Winkle can be the same person um, with young female mouse. So we can pair human faces to similar face pair and dissimilar face pair. So similarity are encoded as binary relations, right? And uh, the partial faces are modeled as nodes. Then the cross source face pair are constructed as a graph. Now we have constructed uh, the graph, but actually the graph is kind of noisy. Uh, there are several reasons for it. So for example, uh, the crowd workers may mispire the partial faces from different groups because they didn't check the partial faces carefully. That's very possible. Um, and also the different crowd workers may have their own bias in charging the similarity of partial faces. So we want to improve the inaccurate relation between different partial faces. But uh, a challenge is we don't know the identity of the full human faces of these partial faces, so we can't check them directly. But we observe that the public human faces, that's a, about like a celebrity faces that we use to train the face recognition model. So uh, this, although the public face, human faces and private human faces are different in many aspects, like the distribution and the environment, but, uh, but they are both human faces, they are both human. That means the consistency of the face consonants in public human faces should be the same as the partial faces from private human faces. So for example, for old female faces, um, both public and the private faces share the same face characteristics, such as the face skin, uh, wrinkles, and many others. So uh, the inaccurate relations between partial faces will also be inaccurate or incorrect between the potential partial faces in public faces. So based on this intuition, well, we develop a self-supervised partial graph denoising generator to identify the abnormal relations between partial faces. So given a public face, we first encode the face input face and aggregate it with all connected partial face features. After that, we perform the B-relational partial graph convolution to propagate the public face information towards connected neighborhood partial faces in terms of both relations, respectively. Uh, for each partial face node with positive and uh, negative relations, we can generate the public face representat representations. We expect uh, there exists at least one connected partial face. A partial face group that can reconstruct the basic face characteristics by exploring both the, the positive and the negative relations. So after the optimization process, we remove the relations with lower attention scores that than a predefined threshold to reduce the bias in the relation.
so given the constructed partial graph, um, like how can we leverage it to improve the he, performance? Sorry to interrupt, but the time is over, so you need to wrap up. Okay. Try to conclude uh, in one minute. Sure, no problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is another, this is the last module of our model that uh, uh, we use to improve the, uh, the performance of the face recognition models. The basic idea is that uh, we ensemble different uh, partial faces with similar relations and uh, uh, we put it, uh, we, and we uh, encode it to the input public faces to, to make it more discriminative. Uh, so we use two data sites. The first one is the uh, Celebration A data site, which is very common for the uh, large scale face image data site. And another one is LFW. So we use the Celebration A as uh, public face images and LFW as personal images. And uh, we created some training validation and testing data. So this is the evaluation results of our, uh, of our paper and uh, for table one and table two, so they demonstrate that uh, this uh, our framework can improve the performance of this uh, of the uh, state of art uh, face recognition algorithm, and also we can make the face identity more discriminative. Uh, for example, in the figure at um, bottom left, uh, we can see the distance between different identities are uh, become la becoming larger. And uh, uh, for the privacy part, uh, we can see that the crowd worker is more difficult to identify uh, the, uh, the identity of the human faces compared to other state of art. And uh, if anyone is interested, you can sell paper for the ablation study. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry for the uh, delay.